Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to discuss about uh, chest tubes and a little bit about uh, surgery on the chest thoracotomies. As you all know, uh, we insert chest tubes under uh, very few but very clear indications. Some of these are pneumothorax, hemothorax or hemonemothorax. If there is either air in the pleural space or there is blood in the sp pleural space or both of these then we'll need to insert a chest tube to help the deflated lung re-expand. Other indications of chest tube will include a flail chest in which uh, there is paradoxical movement of a fractured segment of ribs or if there is expanding surgical emphysema. This is actually a bit controversial because uh, uh, the old concept was to put in a chest tube for surgical emphysema. Surgical emphysema is basically air under the skin. But uh, new studies have shown that surgical emphysema may be managed conservatively if the patient is not too much dysneck or the emphysema is not expanding. We also need to put in chest tubes after cardiac or pulmonary surgery. Basically in any surgery when we are opening the pleura, we will need to put in a chest tube. <coughs> Chest tube, whenever we are going to insert a chest tube, we need to keep in mind certain anatomical landmarks. There is a thing called triangle of safety. It's an area on the lateral wall of the chest, which has basically it has no major nerves, vessels or any other important structure. So this is the safe area where we put in the chest tube. As you can see in this diagram above, this triangle is the triangle of safety. So what are the boundaries of the triangle of safety? Simply anterior axillary line, mid axillary line and upper border of fifth row will make up the boundaries of the triangle of safety. These correspond to the borders of the muscles as well, uh, pec major, latissimus dorsi and the diaphragm. Other considerations whenever we are putting in a chest tube, we need to keep in mind a few things. Uh, we are passing a tube in the intercostal space. And if you remember your anatomy, there is uh, uh, these costal nerves and vessels pass along the lower border of the ribs. So whenever we are putting in a chest tube, we pass it along the upper border of the lower rib. Whenever we are passing it between two ribs, we will always remain at the upper border of the lower rib because the neurovascular bundle is along the lower border of the upper rib. So, and secondly, we always direct the tube upwards, backwards and medially. Again, uh, some uh, surgeons prefer to direct it downwards rather than upwards whenever they're putting in for hemothorax. But remember, pleura is a closed space. It doesn't really matter if you put it upwards or downwards. When the lung will expand, the fluid in the air won't have anywhere else to go except into the chest tube. Lower end, the tube, uh, end of the tube should always remain under water because if uh, it rem does not remain under water then we will basically be creating an open pneumothorax and the water bottle should never be raised above the patient's chest. Uh, the triangle of safety and this is the chest tube having been inserted. We can never go below this line because if we go below this line remember the dome of the diaphragm extends downwards laterally but in the midline it goes up up to the fourth intercostal space. So if you go below this, you may inadvertently put the tube into the liver or into the spleen. This is the mechanism. Uh, when we put in a chest tube and we connect it to an underwater seal, what actually happens is the water column creates negative pressure which actually helps the lung re-expand. Air can escape out when the patient breathes out, the air escapes out under the water and when the patient breathes in, there is a water column that rises in this tube and it creates negative pressure. This negative pressure will help the lung re-expand. But like every procedure, chest intubation will also have some complication. The first and most common complication is pain. Skin, pleura, both are pain sensitive. So we can give local anesthetic to the skin, but pleura, when we put in a tube into the pleura, whenever the patient breathes, it will cause pain. Some patients might be able to tolerate it, but for some it may become intolerable. Secondly, it be, may become infected. And if the infection becomes out, goes out of control, it may lead to a condition called empyema thoracis, in which there is pus in the pleural space. 
Thirdly, if you haven't been careful enough, you may injure the neurovascular bundle leading to hemorrhage. This may be the primary hemorrhage or in uh, secondary hemorrhage, it may the tube may erode the pleura or the lung parenchyma leading to bleeding. Dislodged tube when the patient moves, if the patient isn't careful enough or if the surgeon hasn't fixed the tube properly, the tube may become displaced. It may slip out of the chest becoming useless. Uh, if uh, the surgeon isn't careful enough, he may in injure the lung parenchyma, the diaphragm, the liver, the spleen while intubation. Uh, next complication is if the lung hasn't re-expanded properly and you have just removed the chest tube, the patient may go back to the initial condition when he came. Failure of the lung to re-expand or bronchopleural fistula. Bronchopleural fistulas are the most dreaded complications because now there's a communication between the uh, main bronchus, the pleura and the skin. Basically, whenever you breathe in, the air can go out of the skin and it can, same way it can come back and there's no negative pressure in the pleural space. The lung will not re-expand. So in these conditions, we'll have to surgically re-expand this uh, lung. Moving on to the surgery on the chest and the lungs, basically what we need to discuss with you guys is thoracotomy, but I've just uh, discussed these things in a bit detail so that you will know because these words are sometimes used and we don't really have an idea what they mean. So surgeries on the chest may be done in two ways, either it may be an open surgery, it will be a, called a thoracotomy or it may be a minimally invasive surgery which is called VATS, uh, Video Assisted Thoracic Surgery. The procedures that we can do with both of these are biopsies, lobectomies, pneumonectomies, lung transplants, pleurodesis, trans uh, we'll discuss all of these one by one. What are the indications of pulmonary surgery? Obviously uh, bronchial carcinoma with increased incidence of smoking in our populations. Uh, lung cancer is becoming very common and it is a particularly lethal type of cancer. Inflammatory condition, for example, tuberculosis or an abscess or bronchiectasis may render the lung so damaged or so uh, non-functional that we may have to do something surgically. Or if there's a uh, trauma to the chest or degradative disease where there are large bulla or congenitally in which there's, uh, with the example is loba emphysema. Which incisions can we use uh, when we are doing a thoracotomy? We can either give a lateral incision or an anterior incision or sometimes we actually combine these two. When we are considering lateral incisions are anterior lateral incisions or posterior lateral incisions. These are basically incisions for thoracotomy. The word thoracotomy will mean opening up the chest. They are not specifically for operation on the lungs. They may also be used to operate on structures in the mediastinum or even on the heart. Interior incisions will be transverse, vertical or you may custom design them as you need. So in these, the if you look carefully, the incisions 1 and 5, these are vertical incisions. Incision 4, this is an anterior lateral incision. We give it an intercostal space. It extends on the right side anteriorly and onto the lateral aspect. And this incision 3 is a posterior lateral incision. It starts from the lateral aspect and goes posteriorly behind the scapular border, depending upon the indication for which we are operating. What are the complications? Some of the, some of the complications are general to all surgeries, for example, bleeding, infection, and failure of the wounds to heal but specifically if we are talking about lungs we may either injure the lung or the lung may not expand postoperatively. Other complications are uh, uh, consolidation or collapse of the lung, uh, persistent pneumothorax, a bronchopleural fistula. Uh, every pulmonary surgery needs a one lung ventilation because if you are operating on the heart or the lung to get a better view, we will only use one lung of the patient, we will not use the other lung. That will in itself lead to increased incidence of uh, thromboembolic phenomena, cardiac arrhythmias and uh, wound related are common to all surgeries, infections, failure to heal and adherent scars in which the scar becomes adherent to the underlying structures. The joints may become stiff, the muscles may have problem and so on and so forth. The prognosis of thoracic surgery depends on three things. Indications of the surgery for what you are operating. If it's a benign condition, if it's an uh, infectious problem, you can just remove it and get rid of it. 
if it's a tuberculosis, uh, sorry, if it's a malignancy, then the prognosis will be grave. Or uh, how much of the lung tissue have you removed? That is also a determinant of how well the patient will recover and overall health of the patient before surgery. So if we uh, specifically go to uh, some surgical procedures that we perform on the lungs, we will discuss them very briefly here. The first one is pneumonectomy. Pneumonectomy is removal of one lung, complete. Okay, these are usually done for tumors. Uh, it will uh, be indicated in carcinomas, in tuberculosis or bronchiectasis if the lung is too much damaged. Obviously, you can imagine if the person has only one lung remaining, he will have some trouble as well in postoperative period. Complication in this case might be a damage to the phrenic nerve or the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Uh, in this, if you just look at this x-ray, this is the trachea. The left lung is normal and there is no lung on the right side. This place is empty. So this is right pneumonectomy. The second one is a lobectomy. In this condition, we don't remove the whole lung. We remove one lobe from the lung. Uh, remember your anatomy, the right lung has three lobes, the left lung has two lobes. So if there's a condition, tuberculosis as for example, usually affects the superior lobe. If there's a big uh, tuberculous patch in the upper lobe and it's causing problems, you may just remove the superior lobe and may treat the condition. So again, just to give you an idea, these X's will show you. See here, this area is empty and this area is also empty. These are lobectomies. Segmental resection, again going back to anatomy, each lung has 10 bronchopulmonary segments. These are distinct functional and anatomically and anatomical segments. These are present, uh, these are uh, smaller uh, these uh, segments than the lobes. So if we have a problem which is confined to one bronchopulmonary segment, we may just remove it because these are, mind you, these are distinct anatomical and functional segments. So if you remove one segment, it will not affect the other segments. So you can remove one segment safely without causing much problem with the others. And then there's wedge resection. Wedge resection is a non-anatomical reception in which if there's a problem uh, in the peripheral zone of the lungs, you just remove a wedge of tissue, normal tissue along with the lee and then you can send it for biopsy or whatever you want. Thoracoplasty. In this procedure, we don't remove the lung, but we perform a permanent collapse of a lung. This is usually performed in tub uh, tuberculosis or in emphysemas and it creates a cosmetic deformity. As you can see in this x-ray, the whole of the right side of the chest is collapsed. This is a surgically collapsed side of the chest. This will cause a big cosmetic defect, but if the chest is collapsed, the lung will not be able to expand. So the next is plural surgeries, pleurectomy in which we remove the parietal layer of the pleura, leaving the visceral layer of the uh, pleura behind. This visceral layer will then get adherent to the chest wall and the lung will remain expanded. Uh, these surgeries are usually done when the lung fails to expand with the chest tube. The second procedure is a pleurodesis in which we inject an irritant substance between the two layers of the pleura and this usually leads to adherence which will keep the lung expanded. Thirdly, this is decortication in which we remove the, both the layers of the pleura. In this, we remove the visceral and the parietal layer of the pleura. If you just look at this diagram, if you give an NCN, if you just remove the outer layer, the uh, this is uh, pleurectomy. And if you remove both of these layers, that is decortication. Possible adverse outcomes are infections, pneumothorax, hemorrhage, bronchopleural fistula, empyema thoracis, pleural effusion. All of these complications are similar in all these pulmonary surgeries. So again, moving on to the next thing that is the most recent advance is VATS, video assisted thoracic surgery. This is uh, very much like laparoscopic surgery for the chest. We put in small instruments, narrow instruments through small holes that we perform made, uh, maybe anywhere from two to four, depending upon the surgery we are performing. And the indication is all, uh, the location of these ports are also dictated by the surgery we are performing. 
benefits again it's a minimally invasive surgery it will reduce the trauma of excess it will reduce the pain and the use of analgesics it will uh, reduce the amount of uh, post operative analgesics used and remove reduce the amount of hospital stay the patient will return to his day daily activity activities much quicker and the overall morbidity overall cost and the risk of complications is also reduced contraindication to vats is uh obviously if you're performing surgery on one lung you'll have to keep that lung non functional so if the patient is the other lung is also damaged and the patient cannot tolerate one lung ventilation you will not be able to perform pulmonary surgeries or if the mass is at the pulmonary hilum hilum is the area in the medial aspect on the medial aspect of the lungs from where the vessels and the main bronchi and the lymphatics are coming in so just imagine you inserting your instruments from the lateral aspect of the chest how will you be able to reach the medial aspect of the lung because uh, the lung parenchyma will be in the way so you won't be able to perform any surgery on the pulmonary hilar masses or if the uh, lesion is invading into the mediastinum or the chest wall it is uh, probably irresectable you will not be able to do anything for him uh, you might be able to take a small chunk to get a biopsy to get a proper tissue diagnosis but nothing more than that or if the lesion is too big uh, it may be difficult to operate through uh, minimally invasive techniques or even if you've operated if you've resected you may not be able to remove the lesion through that small incision that you've made uh, this was all about uh, pulmonary surgery and chest tube inshallah see you next week